Welcome to Rukl program Bilahdan, a show with an accent for those without one. Ramadan uh, Kareem, we don't say Ramadan Mubarak anyway because Mubarak is uh, freaking dictators and we got rid of him and we don't want to say Mubarak anymore. So if you really see any Muslim nowadays, there is a billion and a half, so you're very likely to run into somebody, a Muslim neighbor. Okay? So just say Ramadan Kareem or blessed Ramadan, which it is the 10th month. Uh, in the Muslim calendar, this is uh, the months where uh, the Quran was revealed to the Prophet, I believe. And the first word coming from the Prophet, uh, from the God to Prophet was, read, aqra, you know, just be curious. Anyway, so how is Ramadan uh, in the summer and under, you know, those circumstances for um, uh, millions of uh, Americans uh, around the world and Americans in America? And I mean, Muslim and American also here in the Twin Cities. Uh, what's Ramadan? What's looks like? And uh, how people really, uh, their daily life change, their habits, custom they like, compare them to back home and all of this. So we're going to start uh, with our guest today, Hala Samurai. She's a Columbia Heights uh, school board. And uh, she is with us today on Ramadan and she is fasting and she has, I believe, a hundred hijab. Awesome. Welcome to Bulahadan. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Me. And you are involved in um, of community and all of this. So tell us a little bit, so give us a flavor. The people who just saw you now, what do you tell them? Well, I'm an educator in different capacities. I am a teacher by license, but right now I observe teachers and I coach them. So I help them get better at their craft. And um, I do that at Minneapolis Public Schools right now. I'm also on the school board in Columbia Heights. Um, my doctorate is in education. It's an instructional leadership with a focus on education technology. Uh, so, I mean, obviously my passion is education. Um, so what is wrong with our education and what is, what are the biggest challenges now you see it here in, in your district? Uh, not only in my district, all around. Mm -hmm. We have a big challenge with the achievement gap. Um, that there's too much predictability connected to the the race and ethnicity of students. Predictability. Predictability of their scores and proficiency. What does that mean? That means that certain groups tend to score lower, and we, tend and, to achieve less. And does it surprise people when it happens? That's predictability? Correct. I see. It does not be privy to education and another not. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't happen. So we need to disrupt it. We need to disrupt the, the cycle. Um, it's not a simple problem. If I had a simple answer, I'd be a millionaire. And we're not going to solve it here because yes. we want to talk about Ramadan. Yes. Right? Yes. So we'll have, the, you work on the rest of your life. But Ramadan, mm -hmm. Ramadan is, you know, you've been here how many years? Um, I think you came here when, you, when, when I was young four. Age, and four. And yeah, so, so I'm 37 some. years. Yeah. So, okay. So Ramadan through all these years, take us through it. Uh, how it's changing and, uh, and, 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 and how is it different now, you know, in the summer and, you know, even under Trump. I know you're not going to talk about that, but I think it's another burden, you know, people. You know, are you, should I really tell my co-worker I'm fasting? Should I, you know, well, it's I'm, an issue. Yeah. And I guess it depends on where you work. <laughs> <I> see, <yeah. laughs> um, the beautiful thing about Ramadan over the years that I've noticed is how it rotates through the year. So um, it's a, I see it as a big equity opportunity because different Muslims throughout the whole world get to experience it with different lengths, different weather, um, different times of year. So I've noticed that that's just a beautiful thing that it moves around and interestingly it's earlier every year so in some ways you feel like it sneaks up on you <laughs> and in other ways it's a pleasant surprise um one thing i well this time i know i'm interrupting but this uh -huh. time we didn't agree on how it started even when i googled uh, even google say somewhere <laughs> you know it varies here and there 15, 14 yeah. 15 16 why was it, it was always an issue well first thing the interesting thing about googling it or um, looking it up online is when it talks about a night or a day it talks about it starting that evening because in islam um, the day starts the night before 
So that can cause confusion too. So if it said, the I don't day know, start the, night, the night, night before. So like when Ramadan starts, it starts at Maghrib time when we pray Taraweeh for the, the next day, day. The day, I see. Right? I see. Okay. Um, so I don't remember the exact dates right now, 15, 16, 17, I don't remember. But mm. let's say, for example, if the fasting were had started Wednesday, then Tuesday night would be the Taraweeh. So Tuesday night would have been the beginning of Ramadan yes. night. So that causes confusion because in America we're used to the day starting in the morning. So um, that causes confusion. That's one aspect. The other aspect is there's a difference of opinion on how to determine the beginning of Ramadan. And that's okay. That yeah, there's so a difference I, I, of I think uh, I, I'm, I'm all for uh, different confusion because it brings a conversation. We can talk yes. about why you guys not fasting and it's fine disgusting and all of that. But uh, tell us what's your uh, Ramadan day for you? What you just what do you do? What you, 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 I know you need to have your last meal at three o'clock, you know, in the evening or so. Just yeah. still ask, take us through, as a mother, mm -hmm. as a educator, a job, as kids, and you know. Uh, yeah. So what's your Ramadan day look like? Um, well, wherever you define the starting of the day, um, let's say it starts at suhoor around three a.m. Um, the family wakes up and eats. You actually something. sleep and wake up. It depends. Yeah. Some nights this or that. It's hard when you have work and the days are long because if you don't sleep, then you won't get much sleep. Um, so it depends. Uh, I don't subscribe to the whole thing of the mother, the woman wakes up early and makes a, you know, a spread. It's like there's cereal, there's Pop-Tarts figure something out yeah. <laughs> you know we a all simple, uh, it's a simple suhoor it's a breakfast <laughs> yeah. um eat something to put some meat on your ribs and you're good mm -hmm. um and then uh you know we pray fajr and sometimes manage to go back to sleep before going to work um throughout the day there are challenges with fasting but i mean it's supposed to be that way uh, fasting Ramadan is not about us feeling what the poor people feel. It's not about that. It's about challenging ourselves to give up something that our body tells us it wants and needs, and we're giving it up in devotion to God. And in doing that, that brings us closer to Him. Um, there are many benefits to fasting. Uh, but it's, it's about devotion. So, you know, just keeping that in mind and increasing worship, uh, reading more Quran. Um. So, the, so the purpose is, is kind of uh, endurance somehow physically and spiritually because it's yes. not just about uh, fasting or not eating. It's also Correct. not doing a lot of bad things or... It's practicing restraint. Exactly. Cleansing. Cleansing, yeah. So restraint from arguing. Um, fighting, swearing. Are you kidding me? That's hard sometimes. Um, <laughs> you break your fast many times <laughs> with that thing. And but then you start again. Exactly. And then you pick up and keep on going because none of us are perfect. Yes. And that's the idea. And also. we're not supposed to be no, perfect. No, not supposed to be perfect. But um, God rewards us for our struggle. But how, how, what is, you talk about challenge, and I know the challenge of not eating or not, you know, but hold on being angry, whatever, but also uh, at work, you know, mm -hmm. friends and neighbor, uh, that uh, something going on there, do they know you're fasting? Uh, how do you explain somebody why you're not having lunch with us? Why not whatever? Well, I, I make a big fuss about Ramadan and um, it's not an apology of, oh, I'm sorry, I can't attend. It's, oh, this is Ramadan. This is a big deal <laughs> because it's a big deal. And we don't need to apologize for uh -huh. it. Um, and I let my friends and co-workers know. And um, one of my friends had asked online before Ramadan started, how are we going to educate um, our neighbors about Ramadan? And I said, I'm going to put up decorations outside. Christmas? There are Ramadan decorations. I know, but like... I, you don't want to make sometimes I like the holiday lights, okay. and sometimes I like the, the lights Because somebody will say Ramadan, uh, to relate to America, say it's like three days of Christmas, you know. It's, just it's our holidays. Yes. I 
I, I don't like to refer to it as being Christmas because then Christmas is defined as what a holiday is. Yeah. Christmas is a holiday for some people. Yeah. It's not the norm that it's a holiday nice. for everybody. Yeah. Uh, so I, I believe in making a big fuss, decorating inside and outside. And then when people drive by our house at night, they say, oh, why do they have lights? Why you bring and the Sharia to America? And May now? and June. And because this is our holiday. I mean, uh, uh, in a time now where Islamophobia and, uh, and, and we have uh, somebody in the White House that makes racism and Islamophobia the norm and vocal and oval, does that concern you at all? Of course it's concerning, but we can't let it consume us. Mm -hmm. um, we need to go about our lives. Whatever we can do to make things easier for each other is always a good thing we should strive for, but we can't let hate consume us. And uh, uh, the idea of Ramadan also to give you strength to overcome those challenges. Yeah, and to find the strength within you that you didn't know you had, that <sighs> oh, you yes. dig deeper and you push and you can do it. And it's having kids it's, and teenagers, <laughs> it's very important for me also to um, not just think about and portray Ramadan as being, oh, this tough time, it's a beautiful time that we celebrate, and we celebrate it through our devotion to God. Your visibility as a woman, a Muslim woman wearing hijab, we were having a conversation before the show, and you said, uh, that's, you know, uh, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not shying away from this. I actually have almost a hundred hijab. I've never heard that before. Really? Tell, you haven't uh, spoken to hijabis, have you? No, a hundred hijab Maybe. that you made by you, uh, the number is staggering, of Maybe course. Maybe not 100%, percent May. 70, okay. it's still a lot. Tell us a little bit about your relationship with hijab. Wh what does it mean to you? Yeah, uh, hijab is my act of worship to God. How? God wants me to do it, I do it. It's not about a man. It's not about me being the holder of men's chastity in society. Everyone holds their own self. Everyone holds their own chastity. My hijab is about me and my worship and my God. Um, God in the Quran, Allah in the Quran says that uh, so we're not harmed. We wear it so that we're not harmed. And I know that some strange interpretations have said things like, oh, so you're not raped or molested, but that's not what it means. It means so you're not harmed, and that's By very who? easy to see. It's so I'm not objectified. Especially so, in a culture where a woman been... You know, especially in a culture that is, especially in all cultures that are male-dominated. <laughs> especially in all cultures that are male-dominated. I, as a woman, uh, through this act of devotion to God, stop or do my part in standing up to being objectified. I'm not an object to be Well, somebody at. was saying uh, hijab is uh, one of the biggest feminist uh, statement. But most of the Americans, and I'll say most, but average American, will hold the belief that hijab is a symbol of oppression. A symbol, you know how that works. And, uh, and uh, women, Usually, uh, my experience, the women who actually wear hijab, especially in this country, are the strongest women I've ever met. Yeah, so it's a complicated situation. The belonging to the feminist movement or not, I have trouble with that because I don't feel like the feminist movement supports Muslim women and our choices. Yeah, another issue, but... Uh, the, Muslim, the feminist movement seems to define our liberation as being without hijab and not giving us voice, so I don't subscribe to that. I believe that Islam intrinsically is supportive of women's rights and, uh, and I believe that Islam honors women and if Islam were truly practiced the way it were intended, we wouldn't even need to be talking about feminism. We want to have that conversation. Yeah. So w the conversation I would like to have, and we'll end this because we're running out of time, why 70 hijab? What, the decision when you woke up in the morning, it was such a consumerism Some people like culture. shoes, I like hijabs. So when you woke up in the morning, you say, which hijab I'm going to wear, which yeah. color? First I look at the hijab, and depending on the weather, you know, if it's hotter weather, I look at a lighter material. 
I start with the hijab and then I match the rest of it. And it's just a mood thing. And how you feel this day, that's what I'm going to go with? Yeah, colors, prints, yeah. And uh, w when you say I make them, what does that mean? So I'm particular about the material and the design of my hijabs, much like I'm particular about all sorts of other things yeah, in my yeah. life. So I don't really like the hijabs that are available in the market or online. So I go to the fabric store, I pick out a fabric I like with the print I like, and I cut it and hem it, and it's what I need. Well, Hala, thank you so much. It's been a joy talking to you and thank you for Ramadan having Kareem and wish you well with your endeavor and your thank work you and Ramadan thank Kareem. you this Hala Samurai she is a Columbia Heights is on a Columbia High School board and she is active and you know I've heard a lot the hijabi woman and that is personal the hijabi woman with that 70 to 80 hijab and that doesn't really let, don't let that and fool you she's a found a uh, member of our community, we're proud to have you and enjoy you. We'll see you next week. Salaamu Alaikum and God bless you all. Thank you. This Saturday was the first day of the holy month of Ramadan where millions of Muslims all over the world, they celebrated uh, the fasting months and uh, we went to uh, at uh, Marina Grill uh, to find out how the Muslims celebrate Ramadan and uh, in the front of the, uh, the restaurant I found a cab driver is waiting uh, for uh, uh, breaking his fast. MashaAllah we was like having a good 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 first day starting Ramadan. Uh, Minnesota was uh, there is a multicultural state and uh, they have like Different, different multicultural, and they will respect you like makes you everything easy. <laughs> they give you uh, bigger tips in Ramadan. Oh yes, they uh, they nice for that. They. <laughs> <laughs> After this wonderful uh, laugh, uh, we met uh, Chef Adel, uh, the owner of uh, Marina Grill, and we talked to him about the first day of Ramadan. We have to control everything, and we know what we're going to do, and the second day, third day, it gets easier. Yeah. I asked uh, Chef Adel if we can get inside, and uh, we take a look at uh, Ramadan uh, buffet and uh, what we expect today. I would like kapsa oh, with the meat. And this is chicken kebab. Here is lamb chops. This is our favorite. This is brokhi. Back home. And this is kerima kassar. This is eh? This is kerima kassar. This is harissa school. Uh, the customer with their family start gathering in and so eager to break their fast. After 17 hours of fasting, they have enough food. I think it's just a good way to bring everybody together, friends and, and people if you're Muslim or Christian or whatever. Thank you man, happy See. birthday. Thank you. Thank you. From where? Uh, Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia. So how's it different? Uh, it's uh it's really different like in, in Saudi Arabia it's, it's more than like it's a family thing like when you go like all the family come together and you come and everyone brings some mm -hmm. and the US here is like the close thing you have to do is come to a marina because you can you, you may you find familiar faces yet you know it's like your family here yeah Trump visited uh, uh, Saudi Arabia and uh, they promised him we're gonna open up and you don't wear, you don't have to wear a hijab, and you don't want to have to. All of this would become like cute Islam. Tell us a little bit about uh, the first uh, iftar, the first day of Ramadan. Oh, How did man. it go? Man, it's different, man. It's like, <laughs> it's like for me, especially for me, because it's like from Medina, because like when you go in Medina, like people in Medina, especially what they do, they uh, you've been inside the mosque, the Prophet mosque, and they have this whole like large. Uh, oh, Saudi Arabia is very hot. This is summer. Uh -huh. So what do people do there to to cope with fasting in um, such a long well, day? Stay at work, stay at home. That Saturday evening, uh, Muslims uh, came from all over the Twin Cities to celebrate the first day of uh, Ramadan and enjoy uh, themselves. And there they feel like home.